His business journey stemmed from the desire to fulfill a need. He went from selling garbage bags door to door to teaching dancing classes, all in a bid to make money. Fast forward to now, he's worth more than $4.3 billion with investments in different companies, the owner of a one-time winner of the NBA title, Dallas Maverick, and the star of the TV talk show, Shark Tank. Who are we talking about? And how did he climb the ladder of success? Stay till the end to find out. Mark Cuban was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on July 31, 1958, into a Jewish elite working-class family. Norton Cuban, Mark's father, was a talented automobile upholsterer, while his mother, Shirley, was a chill of all trades as he described. Mark started his education at Scott Township, Birdland, attending Nixon Elementary and John Dewey Junior High for half a year. That is when the family moved to the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Mount Lebanon, and Cuban continued his education at Jefferson Junior High. Cuban's journey into business is quite an interesting one. He began his journey in business at the young age of 12 by selling garbage bags. The idea of the business was birthed from his need for basketball shoes. He wanted his father to buy it for him, which his father refused, telling him to get a job to get the shoe. One of his father's friends came to his rescue by giving him a business idea of selling garbage bags and an inventory of garbage bags. And so, he went door-to-door -door offering them the garbage bags at $6, earning $3 as a profit. He did this until he had enough money to buy the basketball shoes. Though he left the business, he learned a lot of business strategies that serve as the foundation of who he is today. He also engages in some random work as a teenager ranging from reselling basketball cards and stamping coins to moving agents to slice the meat at a deli. His College Years Instead of attending high school for his senior year, Mark Cuban applied for admission as a full-time student at the University of Pittsburgh. Surprisingly, he moved to Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, after spending one year there. In 1989, Cuban graduated from the Kelly School of Business, bagging a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. According to him, he had chosen the Kelly Business School due to its affordable tuition fee. During his years at the university, he engaged in different odd jobs, such as hosting disco parties and dancing classes. Charging $25 per hour in a bid to settle his tuition fees, after he graduated from Indiana University, Cuban moved back to his hometown Pittsburgh and he got a job at Mellon Bank. Still, he only spent a little time at the job as it wasn't the type of thing he was interested in. He's more of an entrepreneur to sit at a 9-to-5 job. His career Cuban left his hometown for Dallas, Texas, where he first found work as a bartender at Elan on Greenville Avenue. Later, he worked as a sales representative for Your Business Software, one of Dallas's first retailers of PC software. Then, he started his business venture named Microsolutions. He meticulously grew the company, which specializes in system integration and software reselling. It was an early proponent of technology companies such as Lotus Notes, CompuServe, and Carbon Copy. In 1990, the 33-year-old Cuban sold Microsolutions to CompuServe for a staggering $6 million. Excluding taxes, he made approximately $2 million from the deal. Growing up, Cuban didn't envision himself laying hands upon that whopping sum of money at a young age of 33, which is why he had to retire early after selling microsolutions. He purchased the American Lifetime Air Pass and went on countless trips to visit as many countries as possible. However, he dives into the business world again as he has more to offer the world vis a vis. The Birth of AudioNet and Broadcast.com Cuban's early retirement ended in 1995, and he, along with his fellow Indiana University alumnus, Todd Wagner, launched AudioNet, combining the requited love for Indiana Hoosier college basketball, webcasting, and business management. AudioNet is an online sports broadcasting website that rapidly expanded into broadcasting hundreds of sports channels and radio programs. The platform had perfect timing, it was launched right at the start of the dot-com boom. In 1998, AudioNet became Broadcast.com. The first live-streamed Victoria's Secret fashion show was launched by the platform that year. By 1999, Broadcast.com had expanded to 330 employees and accumulated $13.5 million in revenue for the second quarter. Yahoo later acquired Broadcast.com. Q 
Cuban received $5.7 billion in Yahoo stock for the deal. Cuban hedged against the risk of the decline in his shares and he could hold on to 90% of the value when it fell from $237 per share to $13. As if he predicted the burst of the dot-com bubble. The Entertainment Industry Cuban made a significant foray into the entertainment industry with HDNet, which would later become AXS TV. The company was launched by 2929 Entertainment, which he co-founded with Wagner. The industry is based on the vertically integrated production and distribution of films and videos. Implementing his business and acumen in the entertainment world, Cuban purchased Landmark Theatres, a chain of 58 art house movie theatres, on September 24, 2003, and Magnolia Pictures. With Magnolia, he funded Redacted, a fictional movie based on the 2006 Mahmoudia killings. In April 2011, Cuban put Magnolia and Landmark Theatres up for sale. Landmark Theatres was sold to Cohen Media Group for an undisclosed sum. Following the advice of his young daughter, he became a contestant in Dancing with the Stars in 2007. He further augmented his celebrity by appearing in the popular television series Entourage and the League. Cuban was also featured in the big screen version of Entourage in 2015 and as US President Marcus Robinson in Sharknado 3. He is also a co-founder of Synergy Sports Technology, an online basketball scouting and video delivery tool many NBA teams use. In 2018, he ranked 190 on the Forbes list of the world's wealthiest people with a net worth of $3.9 billion. Investments in Startup Cuban not only co-founded companies but also invested in various startups. He was the owner of Ice Rocket, a search engine that scours the blogosphere for content. He also invested in Web Blogs Inc., later acquired by AOL. In 2019, Mark Cuban, Steve Watts, Aston Kutcher, and Watts' wife Agnella invested 50% stake in a startup business, the Veltscone Shoe Business. In 2021, he backed a Layer 2 decentralized exchange injective protocol with some other firms such as Pantera Capital, Block Tower, and Hashed. Shark Tank on TV Cuban began Season 2 of the ABC reality series Shark Tank in 2011. Though exact figures differ, as of May 2015, he had $19.9 million in 85 investments across 111 Shark Tank episodes. Rugged Maniac, Beatbox Beverages, Obstacle Race, and 1031 Productions are his top three investments totaling at at least $1 million. Since 2011, when Cuban joined the show, the ratings for Shark Tank have increased. Also, the show has won four Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Structured Reality Programs from 2014 to 2017. Before the category was created, it won the award for Outstanding Reality Program two years in succession, 2012 to 2013. As of 2022, Cuban is the second richest of the Sharks to feature on the show. Acquiring the NBA's Dallas Mavericks Cuban made his NBA debut when he paid Rosborough Jr., $285 million to buy the Dallas Maverick in 2000. For Cuban, a sport enthusiast, the opportunity to play for a professional team is like a dream come true. However, Maverick is far from being his dream franchise. With its recurrent failure caused by poor personal decisions and mediocre players and coaches, Cuban took advantage of his new role as the owner to immediately change the team's state. With his enthusiasm and determination, he remodels the team's culture, erects a new stadium, and cares for the players. The Mavericks respond positively to the new owner's enthusiasm. Cuban showed himself to be the number one fan of the team, cheering them on during games, inciting opponents, and deriding refs. The team qualified for the 2001 playoffs, set a franchise record for wins the following year, and made it to the 2006 NBA Finals before losing to Miami Heat. The Mavericks later won the NBA title in 2011 by defeating Miami Heat. Other Sporting Interests Due to his never-ending love for sports, Cuban had reportedly shown interest in owning a Major League Baseball franchise and had attempted to purchase at least three unsuccessful franchises. In 2008, he submitted the first bid of $1.3 billion to buy the Chicago Cubs. Even though he was selected to participate in the second round of bids, he wasn't called for the final bid in 2009. He bid actively for Texas Rangers in January 2012 with Jeffrey Elbex by placing bids totaling $600 million. He had outbid a co-bidder group headed by ex-pitcher and Rangers executive Nolan Ryan. Still, he later lost the deal before the Rangers and San Francisco Giants game in the 2010 World Series. 
He made another bid in January 2012 for Los Angeles Dodgers. However, he was eliminated before the second round of bidding. His personal life In September 2000, Cuban tied the knot with his wife, Tiffany Stewart, at a private ceremony in Barbados. The union is blessed with two daughters, Alexis and Alyssa, and a son, Jake. The family lives in a mansion in Dallas, Texas. As of November 2022, Cuban's net worth is estimated to be $5 billion. Mark Cuban's Philanthropic Acts The philanthropic acts of Mark Cuban can't be measured. He created the Fallen Patriot Fund in 2003 to cater to the families of U.S. military personnel maimed or injured in the Iraq War. In 2015, he made a $5 million donation to his alma mater, Indiana University Bloomington, to build a center for sports, media, and technology, which was also named in respect to him. Also in 2020, he picked up former NBA player Delonte West from the street. He booked a hotel room for the player and paid for his treatment in a rehabilitation center. These are some of his philanthropic acts, while some are done anonymously. There you have it. The story of Mark Cuban transitioning from a garbage bag seller to a billionaire. He started his adult life with little to no money in his pocket, but with big dreams in his head. With determination and hard work, he climbed the ladder of success and became one of the most successful people in the business world today. What lesson did you learn from this video? We'd love to have you share it with us in the comment section below. Subscribe to this channel for more business stories that will cure you up for success. Thanks for watching this video. See you at the next one. Till then, take care.